Hi guys and welcome to my review of Windows 10 and in this video I want to show you the things I think are worth mentioning. I have 12 points. I maybe won't go into every little detail but just the ones I think that are worth mentioning because I saw a lot of new changes that for most average or end users just won't make a big difference but some of them are. So let's start with the first thing that is mostly visible and that is the new design. Everything like you can see here in the taskbar, also here we now have a black bar with just more updated and refreshed icons. Also we can see it here and in the file explorer everything is new, more flat, more clean and just a little bit more to a more nicer approach because what I think is really nice here it still looks kind of like the old one just updated so it won't sway away all the old users that are no used to all this style. But it will also be something nice and fresh to see for the new users out there. So I definitely know to appreciate it. This is really nice. The next thing to show off would be the new hybrid start menu. What we had here, usually on Windows 8 it was full screen, now we have the new half transparent one. It is also resizable as you can see here. Do it as you want. You have access to your Explorer, to your settings. You can get to the power menu. You can see all the apps and access them here quickly. Also your most recent apps, your account and the live tiles. So this definitely isn't throwing you out of the desktop as it did on 8 and I like this a lot. And if you arrange them as you would usually use them to, I like it a lot because my muscle memory makes me find things way easier this way. So I don't see an issue not to use it anymore. I like it definitely a lot. The next thing to call out would be the universal apps. But we already had universal apps, but a big change now, now they are in a window. Because now you can easily just use one in conjunction with a normal desktop app and it doesn't take up the whole screen, you can use it as you want to. Now snap it on again and just use it. This is for me something that made a big difference because now I use, for example, Tweetium or Tubecast or something like Read Ready way more often because usually I had to jump between full screen and desktop mode all the time. So this makes it a lot easier and way more convenient to actually use them. The next feature I like a lot would be the new snap system and this makes maybe the biggest difference for me is one of one of the most important factors for me because what we had usually on windows 8 was this you drag it to the side you had half of the screen you drag it to the other side you have half of the screen which it still does but the big difference now is if you snap it to one size and for example resize it to the size you want to like for example this size is good enough for you then open your explorer what you did on 8, you snapped it and it was half of the screen. But now it takes up all the space to make it full screen available. And this is such a huge difference for me because now I can use all the screen. So take the most advantage of the screen real estate and use, not use anything else. As you can see, I could even do this for this. I can also resize it. So the new snap feature is a huge, huge improvement because one thing I, for example, like a lot, if I would make it bigger now and want the Explorer to fill up the whole space, just drag again and you have this. So this changed my whole behavior on my desktop because now I use Universal Apps way more often because it just gives me way more multitasking capabilities. That for me, like I said, is the biggest improvement we also have different snap modes because as you can see here if you for example also do it without the window for example let's just open two apps and drag one it will then always ask you for the second half what you want to do for example open this if you would have open let's close it again open tubecast and open internet explorer use one drag it to the side it will ask you which you want so for example, this one again, and if you want to resize it, just use the other one, snap it again. It's that easy and this is really convenient, really makes a huge difference for me. And you also have still all the four corners. You can adjust it to one fourth. You can do the same on the bottom and here. So definitely, definitely, definitely a huge plus and completely changed the way I use it. We also, for example, on Universal Apps have the feature still to use them in full screen with this icon here. As you can see, now you have the traditional tablet layout, but I guess on a desktop you will mostly, if you want to use it full screen, 
just use the full screen button so this one to maximize so this way you can still use it in your explorer all the time and switch between them as you can see here this still works so that is definitely nice but you have the full screen button if you decide to want it the next thing would be the task view which is really nice let's just open a few apps to have them side by side let's get to it we have it let's make it smaller so if you now lost track of all your apps you can just hit this button here at the bottom for the task view and you will see all your apps side by side and you can just choose to whichever you want to jump this makes it quite convenient also if you open for example explorer it makes it easy it will be always listed as this very convenient very easy to find this also brings me to the next point which would be the desktop we now have multiple desktops so if you decide you want the second desktop just for example for your social media you use for example twitter let's take twitter on the second screen let me quickly try that once again open twitter here now you have twitter on one side and if you want maybe to use chrome as well let's just use that so we have both and if you want to do something completely different on your first one just go to your first one adjust it the way you want to use it however like for example this and this and now you have it and you can do all the stuff you want to if you quickly want to change back to what you did before with your social media for example just go back so multi desktop definitely makes a difference especially if you are a heavy multitasker it will be quite a big difference okay what else is there to show off the next point would be two different kind of settings because if we right click we still have the old control panel here with of course the categories and with the big and small symbols so you can still find your old stuff and this is to get into the more in-depth more hardcore settings to get things done but we also now have the more commonly used settings like here where you have system devices personalize your accounts also all that stuff so this is mostly for the normal average user because there are only options you will actually see normal like for example your resolution your apps and features and all this and if you have to do something more advanced more in-depth then you have to go into the system panel but i think this dividing between those two makes a lot of sense because most average users won't really need to use this but for example a system administrator he will mostly be here and not everything out of here works from here because if you want to change some certain specific things like the resolution you will always be thrown into the new design as you can see here if we go into the set you will always be thrown into this and not anymore in this old style but like i said this makes a huge ton of a difference or at least of a sense the next thing to show off would be the info center or the action center call it whatever you want it here you get notifications if you have them enabled for example right now if you use the twitter app you will get twitter notifications also mails and so on these will be here and on the bottom here we have quick settings for example for changing the wi-fi quiet hours the position the brightness all this is quietly used up here you can also make this smaller if you don't need to but i think we have enough screen and the good thing here is on the status on the taskbar you have quickly access to the most important things for example here you see the battery life you can get to the battery saver also for the brightness which you can see here you can easily change it up and it also shows you the brightness something i missed on older versions because now i actually see how bright it is also if i want to quickly change the wi-fi i see the wi-fi is here also plain mode and for the volume it works the same way everything is quickly accessible you have all this on the side really really handy the next feature maybe you already heard of it is the tablet mode tablet mode definitely is to be used on a tablet and it doesn't make so much sense here on a desktop but still just to show it off what you will get is one more button for back it kind of works or kind of not i didn't use it too much since it is on desktop or on my personal desktop and what you get here for example is all the apps by default will start as you can see here in a full screen view usually those icons won't appear they will be hidden but i made them appear because it just makes for me the multitasking or app switching faster because usually you wouldn't have this now and all you have if you want to change between this for example and back to tubecast you will have to use the task view button like you see here but if you have these icons available 
you can just quickly jump between them. But as you can see here, all the apps start right up front, default as a full screen view. And you still have the old snap feature we had before. So just drag it to left or right. And once again, you have the opportunity to choose which you want to use, for example, this right now. And then you can just drag them as you want them to be in terms of size. It works really, really nice. And on our tablet, I think this makes it a lot easier. Okay, we had this before, but I think it works even better right now because you still have the navigate or the taskbar. You have the access to make them big or make them small again. So definitely nice to see we have all the options available and it's just really nice to see quickly have multitasking. So multitasking works, works so much better than any other system. So really, really great. The next thing I wanted to show off, let's drag this down. Let's get out of the tablet mode, back to the old standard mode, would be some small improvements to the file explorer because there are mostly two things changed. We now have quick access, which gives you access to your most recently used folders and if you open it by default as you can see here you will just see all the folders appear here so these are the most recently ones used yet and also you get here the the recent most recent used files just to find them easier this is really nice you can also pin folders here this is definitely nothing big but just easier to access them since you also have the quick drop down here but you can pin them here as well but i think this is really handy a lot of times the, la the not last but one of the last features would be the new edge browser what i personally think i'm not quite sure what to think about it yet because on a laptop or on a desktop i don't see myself using it that much because it is a universal app and as you can see here way more designed for tablet use as well because on a tablet i definitely see myself using it because all the elements are bigger for example if we compare it to the old internet explorer everything here just isn't that touch friendly which it definitely is here the performance is great we have of course the one feature that everyone talks about the annotation feature to just drag and draw on something i personally don't see myself using this at all but if you want to use it so it is definitely nice to have and on a tablet, I definitely see myself using it. On a desktop, I'm not quite sure yet because we don't have any enhancements. It is supposed to bring a lot of new plugins and enhancements like we have on Firefox or we have on Chrome. And once they are here, it will definitely be more interesting. But for right now, it's for me just more of a preview or something. And I won't really use it that much. The last feature I want to show off and not really know what to think of it yet is Cortana. Because on German, I tried it. And it doesn't even get the easiest things done. If I would just ask it for the weather, for example, okay, this will be now in German. Wie ist das Wetter? And you can see it did understand me, but it can't do anything with it. It has no clue what to actually do with it. So what I can do is I can just use it to search for it. If I ask for something it will just do a bing search and that works and in english for example on windows phone on the right devices i do cortana worked a lot better but as for me for example on a uh, that i'm mostly a desktop user i don't see myself using it because i don't have a microphone there and if i can just if or if i have to type it in i can just use the google search or a bing search anyways but you can usually, if it, I think in English it will work a lot better. You can make appointments with it. You can ask for specific stuff. For example, how old the specific actor is or so. So it works quite nice, but I don't see myself using it. And I don't really know any users that will use it that much. And especially if you are a desktop or laptop user who doesn't use on a phone already his personal assistants, like for example, Siri or Google Now or Cortana on a Windows phone, you won't really... I don't think it will change the behavior because I don't see people changing to this if they haven't already used a personal assistant before. So let's wrap this up. What are my thoughts on Windows Phone? Or I mean on Windows 10. First of all, my transition to Windows 10 on this laptop wasn't quite issue free. Same as on my desktop, I had a lot of issues. The store didn't want to download specific apps. The upgrade itself didn't work. Some drivers didn't properly update. But once this starting issues were resolved, it worked really nice. The performance is really great. Battery life so far, at least what I see, seems to be on par what I got on Windows 8.1 on this device. 
So what I see is definitely I, I like a lot of things because just to wrap up all the what we things we had in the round on those 12 points, I like the new design. It just looks fresher. I just think it works way better. It's more appealing to the eye. It just is a lot more touch friendly if you use it on a tablet, but still makes all the sense in the world on a desktop. I like the hybrid start menu. For me, it works completely fine. If you organized well, it will be definitely an improvement, at least for me. Universal app in a desktop environment, I already said it, for me, make a huge ton of a difference because as a window, I tend to use them now, which I never did before on Windows 10. Also, the new Snap system for me is a game changer because this makes multitasking on my desktop now such a big change and I absolutely can't be without that anymore. I really love it. Also, the task view, really, really handy. If you get cluttered, sometimes I just lose myself in too many windows and this makes it easier to find if I use or if I have to find it. Also, multi-desktop. If you are a heavy multitasker, I think this will make life a lot easier. The next thing we had are the two different settings. I think the dividing is the smart thing because most people will just use this one here because there is all you usually need. And if you need some heavier stuff, you have the old one still. Tablet mode on a tablet definitely makes me want to use a tablet again and I will get the Surface Pro 3 again to review just to see how well it actually works. But from what I see and on a desktop and on this laptop, I think as a tablet system, Windows 10 works a lot better. Also, the small little refinements on the File Explorer for me make a big difference because I find things so much easier now. The Edge browser, as I said, works. Nothing totally out of the ordinary yet, so yet. And for example, if you see, what one thing I actually still have this icon here for, because if I search for an app, I can quickly find it, or if I have suggestions here. So Cortana is nice as well. So. As a whole, I love Windows 10 and I can definitely recommend everyone to upgrade. I don't see an issue, why not? Of course, a lot of people still always complain about certain stuff, but I don't see anything wrong with it. There are a few bugs left to iron out because, for example, my AC3 doesn't work anymore and I can't actually access my accounts on my desktop anymore because if I hit on this, it just disappears. But these are small, small things. I think you can also re resolve if you do a clean install, but so far it definitely made a big change for me. My multitasking improved, my overall experience improved. It just looks nice, it feels nice, it works more convenient, faster. I absolutely love Windows 10. It is not perfect, but it is definitely the most advanced desktop system I see myself using as an end user. Maybe Linux offers some things, Windows 10 doesn't, but I think the most average normal person will be absolutely amazed by this and for me it makes look mac os personally a little bit dated and old also in terms of designs but definitely in terms of functionality so this was my review of windows 10 let me know what you think did you already upgrade what are your thoughts so far and all in the comments okay until next time bye